good morning students say your prayer uh, thank you naan or nalla asiriyar naan ungalku thaayagum thandiyagum varadumariyaga anbod kalvi bodipen naan or nalla asiriyar naan ungalku thaayagum thandiyagum varadumariyaga anbod kalvi bodipen naan or nalla asiriyar naan ungalku thaayagum thandiyagum varadumariyaga anbod kalvi bodipen okay students take your social science book and come to page number 253 Uh, so today we will move to civics the human rights so already we have discussed two unit in civics so what are the unit we have discussed yeah about democracy you yeah, know so democracy then the election political parties and pressure groups so in previous unit second unit we discussed about the election process then political parties and pressure group yeah then in history we have completed how many unit yeah seven unit so last class we discussed about the state and the society in medieval india okay ma so today we will move to civics so human rights so what is a human right yeah so the moral principles that describe certain standard of human behavior and are regularly protected in the laws so in municipal that is in local and international law yeah so human rights means so nothing but so the moral principles so that describe certain standards of human behavior and are regularly protected yeah so some uh, human behavior yeah some standards of human behavior are regularly protected in law or through law or act so that is human rights yeah so we will def- uh, we will discuss about the definition yeah so and uh, the historical background of uh, the human rights in this unit okay ma and also human rights related with our indian constitution okay ma learning objectives what are you going to learn from this lesson so first to know about the international efforts for protecting human rights so to know about the international efforts you yeah, know so human rights is common for all so not for a particular person or not for a citizen of a particular country you know it is applicable to all the individuals it is applicable to all the persons all human beings living in this world you know so to know about the international efforts for protecting human rights then to understand the basic human rights ensured in the indian constitution you know so to understand the basic human rights so which are make sure you know so that are available surely to our indian citizens so which are mentioned over constitution yeah so to understand the basic human rights ensured so that is make sure in the indian constitution then to understand about the functions of institutions and issues involved in the human rights so to understand about the functions of the institutions and issues related with the human rights then to know about the types of human rights so to know about the types of human rights yeah so learning objective is first to know about the international efforts for protecting human rights then to understand the basic human rights ensured in the indian constitution then to understand about the functions of institutions and issues involved in the human rights then finally to know about the human rights types to know about the types of human rights so what we will see in this lesson so the lesson travels through the history of organizations for human rights so the first the lesson travels through the history of organization for human rights then the rights ensured by the universal declaration of human rights so was highlighted you know so the rights so ensured so the rights it is the this rights is common for all the citizens of the world all the individuals of the world yeah so these rights ensured which that is make sure by the universal declaration of human rights so which was proposed by the international organization uno yeah so the rights ensured by the universal declaration of human rights being highlighted it was highlighted then fundamental rights which are enshrined in the indian constitution and fundamental duties incorporated in the constitution along with the introduction to national and state human rights commission and their functions are explained yeah so apart from the universal declaration of human rights so our fundamental rights so which are mentioned in our constitution we will learn about that also then apart from that we have fundamental duties yeah so while enjoying rights we have to perform some duty we have some duties you know, so what are those duties we will discuss in this lesson yeah and also we will learn about uh, national and state human rights commission and their function 
then finally section rights like the child right sc and st rights that is scheduled caste and scheduled tribes rights then women rights lab rights etc so these things also discussed yeah so if you take human rights it is applicable to all the individual rights all the human beings all individuals yeah but uh, for the children and for the people who are socially depressed so like the sc and st community then women rights so women so they are not uh, given equal right when compared to men yeah then labor rights so the working people yeah so they also have certain rights so these are some special rights given to certain people so we will discuss about this also yeah so this lesson this lesson travels through the history of organization for human rights so first the universal declaration of human rights so that is highlighted then fundamental rights so which are mentioned in the indian constitution and fundamental duties so which are also mentioned yeah first fundamental rights then we will discuss about the fundamental duties then so we will discuss about the functions of national and state human rights commission then finally about some special rights like the child rights sc and st rights women rights labor rights etc so these things all we are going to discuss in this lesson so in today's class we will discuss about so the basic right yeah so first the definition for human rights then the universal declaration of human rights we will discuss in today's class in tomorrow's class we will discuss about the fundamental rights in india so they have started the lesson with a historical incident so with a famous incident yeah, so what was that on 7th june 1893 while a person was on his way to pretoria so pretoria a city in south africa yeah so on 7th june 1893 a person was traveling to pretoria in south africa a white man objected the person's presence of a non white man in a first class carriage and the person was ordered to move to a van compartment at the end of the train Yeah, so that is on 7th june 1893 a person was traveling to pretoria in south africa yeah so a person was traveling to pretoria in south africa in a train yeah so a white man objected that uh, the person was non white man yeah so a white man objected that the person was traveling in the first class compartment yeah so in the train you can see first class compartment second class compartment like that no yeah so the person was traveling in the first class compartment yeah but he was not a white man yeah so the white man objected the person's presence of a non white man in a first class carriage so that is compartment and uh, that person uh, so who was traveling so non white man he was ordered to move to a van compartment so that is common compartment which is at the end of the train okay ma but the man so he had the first class ticket and he refused to leave and he was thrown off the train at peter maitsburg yeah so the man so who was traveling to pretoria was in the first class compartment yeah so the white man opposed his presence in that compartment yeah but he was ordered to leave that compartment but the man so he refused to leave because he told that he had the first class ticket yeah so he was thrown off the train at saint peter maitsburg yeah so he was thrown off the train at peter maitsburg yeah so he was shivering in the winter night in the waiting room of the station that changed the course of his life yeah so the person so he was shivering in the winter night in the waiting room of the station so that incident changed the course of his life he took up the fight against racial oppression yeah so he took up the fight against the racial oppression so racial means so differentiating human beings based on race that is black race and white race yeah so the spirit for active non violence started from that moment yeah so the spirit for active non violence started from that mom- moment yeah so that incident yeah so the person so he is traveling from he is traveling to pretoria in south africa on 7th june 1893 yeah so he was traveling in the first class compartment yeah so he was a non white so he was a indian yeah so his presence was not liked by the white man yeah so he opposed his presence in that first compartment yeah so he was so he asked the white man asked the indian asked that person to leave the compartment yeah but the indian so the person told that he had the first class ticket yeah so the white man and the station master so thrown off him so thrown off the indian in the station at peter maitsburg yeah 
Suffering in the winter night in the waiting room of the station changed the course of his life. You know, so he took up the fight against racial oppression. The spirit for active non-violence started from that moment. So uh, from that moment onwards, so he decided to oppose such activities through his non-violent method. Do you know who was he? Yeah, he was our Mahatma Gandhi. Yeah, so Mahatma Gandhi, he practiced as a lawyer in South Africa for few years. Yeah. So during that time only, so he faced such incident and that is the turning point in his life. Yeah, so that is the turning point, turning incident in his life. Yeah. So from that moment, yeah, so from that point onwards, so he emerged. Yeah, so he wanted to oppose such a kind of practice in human world you are saying humankind yeah mahatma gandhi made the momentous decision to stay on in south africa and fight racial discrimination against the indians yeah so mahatma gandhi decided to stay in south africa and he decided to fight against the racial discrimination against the indians yeah out of that struggle emerged his unique way of protest non violent satyagraha yeah so out of that struggle he emerged his unique way yeah so non non violent satyagraha so the policy you know so the method yeah so without using the violent method yeah so a unique future introduced by mahatma gandhi as a human being gandhi had all the rights to travel in the first class compartment yes as a human being gandhi had all the rights to travel in the first class compartment already he had the ticket of first class only yeah so he didn't uh, had a second class or third class compartment and uh, he uh, traveled in first class he had the ticket of first class but he was thrown off from the train why because of his race so because of his skin color okay ma as a human being gandhi had all the rights to travel in the first class compartment but he was discriminated because of his skin color so discrimination is not only based on color it is on the basis of race gender place of birth caste religion and so on you know so human beings so differentiated among themselves so not only based on skin yeah it is discrimination is on the basis of race gender place of birth caste religion and so on so due to this discrimination people are prohibited from enjoying their basic human rights so due to this so people are prohibited from enjoying their basic human rights yeah so you can see in the picture so inscription at the railway station yeah so in this place only so mahatma gandhi was thrown off on 7th june 1893 yeah so the momentous decision so he took from this point onwards from this incident onwards only okay ma? so what are human rights so the uno united nation organization defines human rights as the right inherent to all human beings so the right inherent so inherent means that is basic or permanent part of something or somebody and that cannot be removed so that is basic one you yeah, so that cannot be removed yeah so the right so that is basic to all human beings regardless so regardless of race gender nationality ethnicity so ethnicity relating to a group of people having a common national or cultural tradition so ethnic means relating to a group of people having a common cultural or national tradition yeah so the right so which is basically applicable to all human beings so without any differentiation in the basis of race gender nationality ethnicity language religion or any other status yeah so the human rights so it is applicable to all human beings yeah so there is no special right to a particular race so there is no special right to male or female there is no special rights to a particular country citizen so like uh, an american citizen should be given special right an african should be not given a special right like that yeah so there is no such differentiation then ethnicity so should be given equal right to all cultural people yeah then language yeah so language so in the world we speak we spoke different languages yeah so we should not create differentiation among the different languages yeah then religion or any other status yeah so everyone is entitled to these rights without discrimination so everyone is entitled yeah so everyone is given right yeah so without any discrimination yeah so the uno defines human rights as the the right inherent to all human beings regardless of race gender nationality ethnicity language religion or any other status everyone is entitled to those rights without 
discrimination so human rights day is celebrated every year on 10th december so human rights day is celebrated on every year on 10th december the history of human rights has roots in all the great events of the world and it has sustained the struggle for freedom and equality everywhere you know, so the history of human rights has its roots as its uh, basic thing in all the great events of the world you know, so the history of human rights has the roots so root means so from where it originate you know, so the history of human rights has roots in all the great events of the world and it has sustained the struggle for the freedom you know, so during uh, 20th century so the beginning of 20th century so many asia and african countries were struggling for their freedom you know. so the united nation organization was formed on 24th october 1945 after the second world war so the united nation organization was formed on 24th october 1945 after the second world war so in the world history so human being so faced two world wars so first world war second world war you know so you will learn about uh, the two world wars in your higher class that is in 10th standard you know so after the second world war so in order to bring the world level peace so the countries so some of the powerful countries of the time had formed an organization called as united nation organization yeah. it proposed to deal with the consequences of war and to prevent such happenings in the future yeah. so the united nation organization proposed to deal with the causes of the war so what are the fact so that uh, causes are that create war yeah. and uh, their duty is to prevent such happenings in the future yeah. so the united nation organization so formed on 24th october so that's why october 24 is celebrated as the uno day upper third end of upper third so what is in by upper third so the policy of racial discrimination in south africa you know so in south africa so south africa was under the british domination yeah so the british settlers yeah so the british settled there and also many europeans are living in south africa yeah so they were white people but uh, the people of so the native people of south africa were yeah black people yeah so the white people so won't allow so the black people into their region you know so into their area you know so there is a separate place you know so even uh, traveling in bus also so the black people were not allowed to sit if the white man is there you know even though all are traveling so both uh, black and white are traveling in a uh, bus means so i am saying just for an example yeah so uh, black persons were not allowed to sit when a uh, white man is there yeah so only white man is given more preference yeah even if you go to a public place means so there is a separate path for white men and black men yeah so even for a uh, so public place you know so even for your public road you know so there is a separate path for black men and white men yeah you know, so black men were so racially suppressed so that is the policy of racial discrimination yeah you know. so apartheid was the highest form of discrimination that existed in south africa yeah you know. so the places of residence were determined by the racial classification so the places of residence so places of living were determined by the racial classification yeah you know. so in india you can uh, see so some of the depressed class people so they were not allowed to live in the so main region of the village you know so they were allowed to live only in the so at the corner of the village the remote area you know so like that you know, so the white people were only allowed to so live in the so main region of the city or a town you know so the black people so they were allowed you know so they were allowed only to live in the suburban area or on the outside of the city yeah. so the place of residence was determined by the racial classification it was the governing policy in the country by the minority whites over the majority non whites that is majority blacks you know so it was the upper it was the governing policy in the country by the minority whites if you take the population of whites they were minority only yeah so the people of south africa protested against such racial discrimination so the people of south africa protested against racial discrimination so nelson mandela yeah so he raised his voice against apartheid when he organized a different campaigns against the government he was imprisoned yeah so nelson mandela so raised his voice against apartheid yeah so when he organized a different so different means openly refusing to obey somebody or something you know so when nelson mandela organized defiant so defiant means 
openly refusing as yes, a campaign a series of planned activities that are intended to achieve a particular social or commercial or political aim as yes, a campaign means a series of planned activities that are intended so that are motivated to achieve a particular aim so maybe a political or social aim yeah so nelson mandela organized a openly refusing campaign against the government so he was imprisoned yeah so so beside growing domestic and international pressure and with the fear of a racial civil war president f w d clark released him in 1990 yeah so because of the growing domestic so that is local level pressure and international pressure and also with the fear of a civil war so that is between black people and white people so the president of south africa f w d clark released nelson mandela in 1990 yeah so how many years nelson mandela was in jail do you know yeah so he was in jail for 27 years yeah so uh, in order to oppose upper state policy nelson mandela so spent his life in jail in prison for 27 years yeah so the efforts taken by mandela and d clark put an end to apartheid yeah in 1994 a multiracial general election was held so in 1994 a multiracial that means so all the people so including black and white people participated in the election in which mandela led the african national congress emerged victory and nelson mandela became the president okay, so mandela so he was the leader of south africa so who opposed the policy of apartheid so the policy of racial discrimination yeah. so for that so he was imprisoned and he was in prison for nearly 27 years yeah. so in 1994 a yeah, multiracial general election was held in which mandela led the african national congress emerged victorious and he became the president of south africa so the universal declaration of human rights yeah, so first we discussed about the human rights so the envo definition yeah the rights inherent to all human beings regardless of race gender nationality ethnicity language religion or any other status yeah then we discussed about uh, the united nation organization yeah now the universal declaration of human rights it is a milestone document in the history of human rights now, so the universal declaration of human rights is a milestone it's an important document in the history of human rights it was drafted so drafted so finalized or written you know, so it was drafted by the representatives with different legal and cultural backgrounds from all regions of the world you know, so the universal declaration of human rights was drafted by the representatives with different legal and cultural background from all regions of the world the declaration was proclaimed by the united nations general assembly in paris on 10th december 1948 so that's why we celebrate human rights day on 10th december yeah, so the universal declaration of human rights is the milestone document in the history of human rights it was drafted it was written it was designed by the representatives with a different legal and cultural background from all regions of the world so not from a particular region yeah so the draft was designed by various representatives from different legal and cultural backgrounds yeah so the declaration was proclaimed by the united nations general assembly in paris on 10th december 1948 yes yeah, so the resolution is called as general assembly resolution 217 a yeah so the declaration as a common standard of achievement of all people and all nation yeah the first time it set out the fundamental human rights to be universally protected and the udhr universal declaration of human rights has been translated into many languages yeah so for the first time the international so set out some basic human rights so that should be universally protected yeah and the udhr has been translated into many languages so there are 30 articles in the universal declaration of human rights and it guarantees freedom of expression as well as civil political social economic and cultural rights yeah, so there are 30 articles in the universal declaration of human rights and it guarantees the freedom of expression yeah, so 30 articles so there are totally 30 rules so 30 rights 
mentioned in the universal declaration of human rights and it guarantees the freedom of expression you know, so you have freedom to express your thoughts express your feelings you know, as well as civil political social economic and cultural rights you know, so these rights are applicable to all people irrespective of their race gender and nationality as all people are born free and equal you know so all people so we human beings are born equal only you know so do we born with a special character or special thing no so all are born equal only you know so there are 30 articles in the universal declaration of human rights and it guarantees the freedom of expression as well as civil political social economic and cultural rights so these rights are applicable to all people irrespective of their race gender nationality as all people are born free and equal so social economic and cultural rights so social economic and cultural rights are integral part of the human rights law that was developed due to the aftermath of world war 2 you yeah, know so social economic and cultural rights so social rights you yeah, know so the basic rights enjoyed by an individual in a society then economic rights you are related with economic terms so like his job and uh, labor rights like that you yeah. know culture so everyone have the right to prevent to follow their culture you yeah. know so social economic and cultural rights are the integral part of the human rights law that was developed due to the after the mat of world war 2 so after world war 2 so this law so that uh, this rights social economic and cultural rights so this became an integral part of the human rights so social rights so the rights enjoyed by an individual in his society in a public place yeah so social rights are necessary for full participation in the society yeah so social rights are necessary for full participation in the society yeah so society a common place so where the people interact yeah so society a common place yeah so social rights so if a man have a social right to enjoy his life you yeah, know so social rights are necessary for full participation in the society then economic rights guarantee every person to have condition under which they are able to meet their basic needs so economic rights means so it guarantee every person to have conditions to have conditions under which they are able to meet their needs so they are a part of a range of legal principles through which economic equality and freedom are preserved in a state so a state means a country or a region yeah so economic rights guarantee every person to have conditions under which they are able to meet their needs so every person so have provided with a condition under which they are able to meet their so able to fulfill their needs yeah they are a part of range of legal principles through which economic equality so economically all should be treated equally that means so we should not provide a special attention to a particular person on the basis of job or on money yeah so we should treat equally all yeah and freedom preserved in a state you know so economic rights guarantee every person to have a conditions under which they are able to meet their needs they are a part of a range of legal principles through which economic equality and freedom are preserved in a state then the cultural rights so cultural rights are human rights that aim at assuring that is make sureing the enjoyment of culture and its components in conditions of equality human dignity so dignity a sense of your own importance and value you know, so cultural rights so it gave importance to the culture you know so every country so every region has its own culture you know so it has a separate culture you know so the cultural rights are human rights that aim at assuring the enjoyment of culture and its components in conditions of equality human dignity and non discrimination you know so social economic and cultural rights so social rights so necessary for full participation in the society economic rights so guarantee every person to have the conditions under which they are able to fulfill their need you know then cultural rights so aim at ensuring the enjoyment of culture and its components in conditions of equality human dignity and non discrimination then civil and political rights 
so we discussed the social economic and cultural rights so civil and political rights so civil and political rights protect an individual freedoms from infringement so infringement means so to limit somebody's legal right so civil and political rights protect an individual's freedom from infringement by the government social organization and private individuals you know so the government and some social organization and private persons you know so they try to so limit somebody's freedom you know but the civil and the political rights so protect uh, individuals uh, from such infringement you know so such uh, way of limiting the freedom you know so this rights ensures one's ability to participate in the civil and political life of the society and the state you know so civil and political rights so ensures that is make sure one's ability one capacity one's capacity to participate in the civil and political life of the society and the state civil rights so the term civil rights refers to the basic rights afforded by the laws of the government to every person regardless of race nationality color gender age religion etc yeah so the term civil rights refers to the basic rights so civil rights means so the basic rights so provided by the laws of the government to every person regardless of race nationality color gender age religion etc so that is the civil rights so the basic rights is enjoyed by all the individuals yeah so that should be provided by the laws of the government so the political rights exist in the formation and administration of a government so they are given to the citizens by law so the political rights exist in the formation and administration of a government so these rights give the power to the citizens to participate either directly or indirectly in the administration so the political rights give the power to the citizens to participate in the administration either directly or indirectly oh, so civil rights so this right so gave the basic rights to human beings yeah uh, basic rights to the citizens yeah so the political rights is so to give the right of the citizens to participate in the administration yeah so say for example so you have the right to vote so after attaining 18 years of age and after attaining a particular age you have the right to contest in election now so that comes under political rights so civil rights your rights to go everywhere you know so all the basic rights come under civil rights so the political rights so the right of a citizen to participate in the public process you know so in the administration process directly or indirectly so that comes under political rights okay ma okay students so today's class we discussed about uh, the human rights so first we discussed about uh, the incident so happened in south africa so to mahatma gandhi so the turning point so which uh, decides the future of mahatma gandhi then we discussed about the definition for human rights and uh, the apartheid policy so the end of apartheid then universal declaration of human rights then we discussed about uh, social economic and cultural rights then civil and political rights okay ma so take your book so take page number 255 textbook reading read the heading social economic and cultural rights then civil and political rights then homework So take page number two sixty four. Fourth round letter. Give short answers. First question: What is human rights? So take page number two fifty four. So see the heading three point one. What are human rights? The UN what defines human rights as the right inherent to all human beings regardless of race gender nationality ethnicity language religion or any other status everyone is entitled to these rights without any discrimination so that is the answer for first question write this question and also detail so fifth kilometer answer in detail write a paragraph about UDHR so take page number 254 Yeah, Universal Declaration of Human Rights (UDHR). So the two paragraph. The Universal Declaration of Human Rights is a milestone document in the history of human rights. So starting from that, and the last point in sign uh, is in sign paragraph. These rights apply to all people, irrespective of their race, gender, and nationality, as all people are born free and equal. So this is the answer for detail one. So fourth round letter, first question. Then fifth round letter, first question. Two mark, one question. and five mark one question so write it in your homework note and read it well 
so thank you students so if you have any doubt in this topic so please contact me so thank you have a nice day